Out there, beyond the edge of our solar system, far past the planets we know, a lonely machine drifts through the black still alive, still listening after nearly 50 years. Voyager 2, launched in 1977, was never meant to last this long. It was built to study the outer planets to send back pictures of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. And then it was supposed to fade into silence. But it didn't. Against all odds, it's still out there billions of miles away in the cold void between the stars. And now it has detected something that no one on Earth wanted to hear something that confirms our darkest fears about deep space. Because it's not just drifting anymore, it's observing something. And that thing appears to be moving with purpose. The question we must ask is this, did Voyager to simply stumble upon a mystery? Or has it encountered a much larger entity, something that might have been waiting for us all along? The initial anomaly was subtle, barely visible in the date a little more than a whisper. Engineers initially thought it was nothing, just random noise in the background. A brief blip in the sensors of Voyager 2. After all, space is full of cosmic static, bursts of radiation, drifting dust, particles from the sun. But then the readings began to change. The plasma wave instrument recorded shifts that were to precise to be random, to controlled to be natural. At the same time, magnetic field data began to spike in clean, repeating patterns pulses unlike anything Voyager to had detected in decades of travel. For a while, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory kept their results private, double-checking every possible source of error. They ran simulations, checked the health of the spacecraft, and compared the readings to Voyager 1, far away in a distinct region of interstellar space. And at that point, things changed. Voyager 1 detected a similar anomaly on an entirely different course. The spacecraft, billions of miles apart, recording nearly identical patterns in the abyss. The odds of that happening by chance were astronomically low. When the team pieced together the telemetry, the truth was stranger than anything they had anticipated. Voyager hadn't detected a single anomaly. It had detected many hundreds. Exactly 305 separate objects, all moving in tight, coordinated formation. They were not random debris fragments drifting aimlessly. They glided past in arcs of perfect precision, maintaining distances from one another like birds in a flock or a swarm of drones. Yet there were no signs of propulsion, no engine flares, no heat signatures, no ion trails of any kind. Even more baffling, the formation emitted pulses with a rhythm through the plasma field patterns to well defined to be natural. It was as if each object was sending and receiving signals, coordinating with the others in real time. In the vacuum of interstellar space, where gravitational forces should slowly pull such a group apart, they moved as one ignoring the rules that govern the motion of natural bodies. Scientists at first tried to compare them to known space phenomena like asteroid families or comet fragments, but nothing matched. These objects weren't spreading out over time. They were holding formation as if under active management. That left only one possibility. Intelligence. If the formation was strange, the way it moved was even stranger. Doppler measurements showed that some objects were traveling at speeds beyond what our current spacecraft could ever accomplish faster than the escape velocity of the Milky Way itself. Yet they accelerated and decelerated smoothly without the telltale signs of thrust or fuel burn. It was as though they were interacting with space itself, manipulating the very medium through which they traveled. Some physicists suggested it might be a form of propulsion we can't yet comprehend possibly altering the structure of spacetime to surf across it without conventional engines. Theoretical physicist Alan Arrays described it as watching something glide effortlessly across a surface we can't even see. This method of travel defied all known physics, hinting at technological or natural laws far beyond our grasp. And yet, what troubled researchers most wasn't the method, but the path. The objects weren't heading toward Earth, nor were they avoiding it. They passed by at a calculated distance, as if they had no interest in us at all. Or perhaps they had already acted in ways we hadn't yet noticed. Then came the detail that transformed a scientific anomaly into something much more profound. 
When Voyager 2's data were analyzed for electromagnetic patterns, the formation's pulses revealed loops, repetitions, and harmonic intervals hallmarks of structured information. To be sure it wasn't an error, engineers activated an ancient backup telemetry channel unused since the 1990s to cross-check the readings. The results were identical, to distinct systems both capturing the same structured messages. Some researchers began to suspect that this wasn't just motion, it was communication. Were they communicating with one another, sending information to another place? Or, most frightening of all, were they broadcasting something meant to be intercepted? Still more intriguing, amateur radio operators on Earth began reporting strange, faint signals at the same time Voyager's instruments logged their strongest readings, as if fragments of the deep space transmissions were bleeding into our atmosphere. The possibility began to emerge that Voyager had not just observed this formation, it had become part of it. And if that was true, the question wasn't just what these objects were, but whether they even saw us as observers in any way. As more data flowed in, the patterns emerging from both Voyagers suggested something no one at NASA had ever felt at ease speaking out loud. The signals weren't random. They had structure, timing, and a level of uniformity that suggested an interdependent system. Dr. Patel Serena of Caltech was a pioneer in suggesting what others were already whispering, these objects could be nodes in a vast network where each device transmits data to the next across unimaginable distances. If this was true, Voyager hadn't just come across a fleet. It had stumbled into a portion of a communication grid at the edge of space, one that could cover entire star systems. The implications were staggering. Networks, inevitably, serve a purpose. They connect points to exchange data, monitor activity, or coordinate action. And if this was a network, then the next question had to be asked, what exactly was it? Surveillance. The unsettling possibility loomed that this wasn't random. We weren't a chance encounter in deep space. It could be a border, active and enforced a perimeter, and Voyager had just brushed against it. Then came a detail that deepened the unease. Comparing and contrasting the dates of archival data pulsed through the plasma from the legendary Voyager record, the transmissions revealed an alarming correlation. Roughly three weeks before the first anomalies were detected, Voyager to had broadcast one of its periodic all systems updates toward Earth, which included a brief calibration signal bouncing through its transmission array. This calibration pulse had a distinct recurrent pattern one that closely mirrored the structure found in the formation's specific signals. For some, it looked like the formation had answered. The idea that these 305 objects had recognized Voyager's unique electronic signature and responded was almost too much for the team to process. Was it coincidence? An artifact of the data? Or had Voyager unintentionally knocked on a door that was never meant to be opened? Shortly after the formation departed, Voyager to begin exhibiting behavior engineers were unable to explain. Certain subsystems began routing data through banks of inactive memory, reactivating dormant circuits that hadn't been touched in decades. The guidance system initiated minor reorientations, ones not included in any sequence of commands from Earth. At first, the suspicion was a software glitch, a harmless flow of out-of-date code. But the modifications were to precise, to purposeful. Telemetry indicated Voyager had begun allocating a portion of its processing capacity to tasks that didn't match any known function in its operating manual. The old probe wasn't adapting, it was changing, and the timeline made it impossible to ignore. Within hours of the formation's closest approach, it was as if something had touched Voyager in the silence of interstellar space and left behind a trace inside it. While engineers wrestled with Voyager's transformation, an unexpected flood of reports started pouring in from Earth. Amateur radio operators from Australia to Scandinavia claimed they were picking up faint, repeating bursts of static unlike anything they had logged before. The messages weren't strong, but they had a curious quality. Their timing was nearly identical to sequences recorded by Voyager 2. At first, these claims were dismissed as satellites or other ground-based communications, 
but after a few operators shared their recordings, professional observatories provided confirmation. Skepticism began to crumble. The flashes were real and their timing aligned with Voyager's most intense detections. This posed an alarming question, were we now hearing the same network Voyager had encountered? If so, the signals were no longer confined to the void. They were here, touching Earth's electromagnetic environment. The divisions between participant and observer had blurred. No one could be certain which side of that line we were now on. Voyager 2 was never meant to be a messenger. It was constructed as a silent observer, a witness to the stars and planets beyond Earth, a capsule drifting into the dark. But somewhere in the icy void between the stars, it may have evolved into something else, a component of a system we do not comprehend, interacting with a network that may not even exist in this universe. The 305 objects it encountered were not random stones. They moved with intention. They spoke in pulses and perhaps they listened. Now, faint echoes of the same pattern are coursing through our own skies. If this is a network, then we are no longer just looking at it. We are inside it. Everything is affected. I'm unsure whether this is surveillance, contact, or something more subtle. But we do know this. Whatever it is, it was first seen billions of miles away interacting with a machine built by human hands. The remaining question, the one no one at NASA wants to voice, is simple. If the system has noticed us, what happens next?